sisters. You catch your breath for a moment. Hi guys. You like to make an entrance, don't Hello. you? How are you? you? It's it's wonderful to have you here. And as we said, you do know how to make an entrance. Well. And you, I, I, I read the Rolling Stone article, which is great. It said that you you love theatrics. Yes, I do. I I live halfway between reality and theater at all times. <laughs> and I was born this way. <laughs> How are you guys? It's so nice we're to great. see you. It's great to see you. To see you too, you. Gaga. Well, you were not born in that outfit, so you got to tell us about it. Oh, I'm just, you know, I just came bringing everything I had with me. I love my fans so much. Thank you for coming out today. And you, you talk about your fans. I have to say, they are wonderful. They've been out here for a couple of days, so respectful, so energized. And they're, they're, it really feels like a family. Yeah, they are. Well, they're my family, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, um, it's an absolute dream come true to be here today and to play in Central Park. I'm from, I grew yeah. up five blocks from here. I'm just, I'm so excited and so blessed and so happy to be here. And I just, to be honest, just to see this many people here to listen to my music makes me just feel so proud. Mm. And you see all the excitement and all the passion in this crowd all around the world. What do you want all your fans to take away from Born This Way? Born This Way is about being yourself and loving who you are, and being proud. Yeah, and as you said, you, you grew up not very far from here. And what does it mean to you to be, to be back here where, you know, you, you grew up and, and to be playing in front it of a crowd like everything. this? It means everything. I mean, it means absolutely everything to me. I used to come and play in these fields, yeah. you know? I used to walk down the street and look into the sky and dream that someday I would fill the park the way that all of the singers before me had. And I just, it's... <laughs> I just, I hope that what you take away from my album is not just the music, which I did want to be fun, and I did want it to be about individuality, but please also take away from it that there is no dream that's too big. Mm. Well, you, you talk about big dreams. Could you ever have imagined that you would be named the most powerful entertainer in the world? And what do you want to do with the power? You know, I, I, um, I never, I guess I never thought about that part of it. I always just thought about the music part. And then, you know, I, I, an interview aired last night, actually, that I did um, called Inside the Outside. And I said in the interview that the, the instrument that I never learned how to play was my fans. You know, they're mm. the part of the story that nobody teaches you. And to, I, the word power makes me very uncomfortable. I just... I just want to do the right thing, and I want to be a voice with them, among them. But, and you have been using... You have been using that voice. You know, we, every, just about every single morning on GMA, we do something related to bullying in, in this country. It is happening, it is rampant in schools and high schools all across the country, and you are using your power to speak out against that. Yes, I, I, I've been uh, actually really very pleased to see how much awareness has been raised around bullying and how deeply it affects everyone. Uh, you know, you don't have to be the loser kid in high school to be bullied. Uh, bullying and being picked on comes in so many different forms. And, you know, if you're not being bullied, all I would say, because I like to talk about the other side of it as well, is, you know, be someone that nurtures. And if there's someone in your class that maybe doesn't have a lot of friends, be the person that sits with them in the cafeteria sometimes. You know, be the bigger person. So many people relate to you as you're so authentic. Uh, we saw that recently in your documentary where you're just so raw and you're talking about 
your insecurities and how they give you strength. Yes, she is definitely beautiful. How were you able to become who you have given what you had to go through? Well, I guess I would say when you start to conceive of the opportunity to put music out and you conceive of the opportunity that people will be watching, yeah. you better put the real you behind <laughs> it and you better put your real self behind it because when the whole world has their eyes on you, if you say something that doesn't truly come from your spirit and your soul or if you wear something that doesn't truly come from your spirit and your soul, it's an injustice to your position. And so I'm really myself every single day and I do it because I know my fans would want me to. Well, you've been having a lot of fun with it, too. It's Saturday Night Live. You ready to go back? Oh, uh, not really. Not really. I think it's too early. But we can if it is. I'm sure you have tape. Is that where you're... No, no, no. Oh, you don't. No, no, no. But you know what we do have is that we have so many viewer questions <laughs> came in. And we want to get to oh. some of them. Okay, great. The first one comes from Jordan from Irvine, California wants to know, what is the most bizarre request that a fan has ever asked you to do? There is no request too bizarre. <laughs> Within reason, <laughs> I guess. Whatever that reason you could imagine I may have, I do have some sense of reason. <laughs> This one comes from Kristen from Pennsylvania, and Kristen asks, if you had one day away from writing, recording, and touring to do anything you wanted without being recognized, what would you do? What'd you say? Yeah. Go, so go, to, go to Greece. Go to Greece. Well, no, that's not what I would do. Although that is a good idea. I like Greece. I've been to Greece. I would say I would really like to... Um, hang out with my fans and have it not be me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Who would you be? I don't know. I'd just be, like, yeah. you know, one of them, I think. Well, that, that, that leads to our next question is in that theme. Isaac from Denver, Colorado. Millions want to know, if you weren't famous today, what career path would you have pursued? Well, I would still be a singer. I just wouldn't be famous. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever think of doing anything else? No. I mean, that would be so awful, wouldn't it? If I just gave up because nobody bought my music. I mean, I just really love what I do. You don't do it for that. Yeah, you, I yeah. don't do it for the money. No, and you have t more than 10 million followers on Twitter, and that's where we've gotten a lot of these questions. And this is a good one from Casey. Do you have something that you always travel with or keep close to you? Something with, yes. Well, I actually wear my Aunt Joanne's uh, uh, birth certificate around my neck. Oh. I'm wearing it right now. It's, it's oh. nestled in my very tight choker. <laughs> and I wear, uh, my grandfather, he died um, about six months ago. I actually wrote The Edge of Glory, the song I'm about to do about him, and I wear his ring every single day. And, and your mom and dad are here today, right? Yes, they are, but they're not within sight. Not within sight. <laughs> but Tyler from Littlestown, Pennsylvania wants to know, whenever you feel like you need some good home cooking, what is your favorite dish that your mother or father makes for you? Well, I usually don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> I usually walk through the door and they say, this is what you're eating. That's the Italian way. You don't, you, you don't get a choice. Perfect. Yeah. Well, we're going to feast on more Lady Gaga in our next half hour. Three songs from a brand new album coming up. Monday, these guys are